Hello YouTube, this is Alan from Hazel Tree Carriage Farms again and uh, today I'm finally excited to tell you that I finally been able to get going on this predator proofing for this chicken coop. So seeing as now we've have all our chicken eggs hatched out, it's kind of got me really motivated to start getting this done. However, the last time I made this video I was pulling apart the chicken run and all that stuff and I was pretty optimistic that I'd be able to dig down right away and get this all done. However, the uh, frost was deeper than I thought it would be. So every single day I've been out here just chipping away an inch at a time, letting the sun hit it and let it melt and do it again. So today has finally arrived that I've been able to actually get my trench dug down. So I'll give you a walk around on that and then uh, we'll get to showing you the nice tool I got from Amazon and we'll hook her up. So this is a Makita narrow crown stapler and that's what I'm going to use to nail all this hardware cloth onto the chicken coop. And I love this, look at this, Makita came up, they even include some safety gaggles. So I'm, a, I'm expecting that they're going to suggest that in the manual. I don't read manuals very often but I bet you these look really really good. Oh man, nice and clear. Big thumbs up for that. Thank you, Makita. So here's the actual tool itself. Very nice and light. Um, there is a couple concerns. The reviews were saying that uh, it's made out of plastic and uh, they said this firing pin here is uh, plastic, but it doesn't look plastic to me, it's metal. So that should be good. And But the magazine itself is plastic or is that, it's that strong plastic. I forget what the name they call it, but I mean, it's probably durable as these things aren't meant to be used as hammers so i mean i don't know what you could do to break that drop it off a roof maybe i don't know but it's a narrow crown stapler so um i'm gonna put her to use here but um never forget to oil these things when you first buy them so makita of course comes with some tool oil and uh i'd never cut this prior to making this video so we'll just get the Leatherman out here here we go we're gonna oil her up a couple drops will do you're just uh, trying to keep those o-rings lubed up so the tool keeps going for you and Makita includes a nice cap on there so it, and it doesn't leak so. I love Makita I've been using it for years and uh, I never I try not to stray from the turquoise tooler tool um yeah so here we go i'm gonna show you what i'm gonna do with all this hardware cloth and we'll give her uh the height of this wall here is three feet and that's the size of the the roll so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put the roll down like that and then i'll cut maybe the roll in half and then i'll span that trench and then bring it up the wall and then i'll bring the full piece down so that'll give it a double layer protection like these gaggles so here we go i'm gonna put this in a faster style video so you guys don't get bored to death but here we go
So I don't know if you can see what through my time lapse there, but I had to crawl inside there and do something because I forgot to frame in a door. And uh, man, this stuff's really tough to work with. If uh, you think about putting some hardware cloth around your coops, I suggest wearing gloves. I don't know if you can see the close up, but my hands are all cut up. But I gotta say these goggles are pretty sweet. I'm pretty excited to wear them. Uh, not really, they're kind of uncomfortable and I maybe feel about 50 years older than I am, but um, it is good to protect your eyes, I guess. So I'll keep wearing them, keep rocking them around, I guess. That went pretty smoothly. Show you what I did with the close up here. So that's a six by 10 hole. So the chicken should be, the baby chick should be able to fit through that no problem. And then I'm gonna cut like a sliding door. So I'm gonna cut a, make a few C channels there and, and there. And then uh, that door should just be, be able to slide up and down. And then I'll put a stopper on the bottom there. So there you go guys, uh, we uh, just got all the hardware cloth on and then that door and so the wife, she doesn't really like the idea of hardware cloth being where the brooder house is so I'm going to leave that up there because I know it'll be good in the future but uh, I'm just going to put a temporary piece of plywood there just to keep the brooder box nice and warm for the chicks until they feather out and then then I'll remove it and then they'll be able to go through that door over there. So this is a, it should be pretty good. I should have used pressure treated plywood and all this stuff. And, but this is just stuff I had on hand and I don't know, lumber prices are insane right now. So we're trying to cut, cut costs a little bit. So I, uh, I just use whatever was around and, and I think it'll be okay. And, uh, for a few years anyways. So, 
Um, I'll show you guys a short little clip of what I do for that trench there. Um, there won't be any talking or anything and probably be another time lapse, but um, you'll be able to see the final product and that's, that's probably good enough. So here we go. Okay, so here we go. We uh, got all the perimeter done in the trench there. Um, I don't know, but my hands aren't looking too good right now. So uh, it's starting to get a little uh, sore. So and I get to work at a salty mine tomorrow. So that'll be very exciting. I'll have to wear some rubber gloves or something. But other than that, uh, I'll give you a quick look of what the final work does, looks like. and. Uh, after that, we'll get going on the actual brooder box. So here we go. So you can see I have it very well meshed in in the corners. And then it just all rides along the trench. Well, it's about six to eight inches on the ground there. So hopefully that helps. And then I overlapped them about six inches. So. And then uh, in the middles, I just overlapped them about two inches, so that should be okay. As long as I get the dirt in there right on top. And there we go. Let's go. Okay, so we got it all that backfield now, and I'll give you a quick view of that. And then Maya wants to say hi. Hi. Okay, there we go. So here we go, we'll uh, show you the view here. So you can see it's kind of all flush with around the chicken coop now, all that wire is buried. And I imagine there'll be some settling happening, but it's all concealed anyways. So that's stage one, done. So now, now we're gonna go on to flipping that brooder box upside down there and putting mesh on there. And then he should be good to put back together. So here we go.
Okay, that uh, worked a lot better than I thought it would. So you can see from the time lapse that I covered the bottom and I'll just show you what I did. So I just overlapped on the outside there, the wire, so no animal can get to underneath. Then on the inside, the ground is completely covered in that hardware cloth. And then I lapped it about five inches on the edge there. So nothing should be able to get through that whole transition there. And uh, it still fits pretty good. So now I'm just gonna go get my uh, drill and some three inch screws, screw her back together, and then we'll, uh, we'll get the top on. This is turning out pretty good. So there it is guys, uh, we just got it all done. So all that's left to do is put the top back on here and then this should be completely predator proof. But I'll tell you what, if we get a predator in there eating our chickens, I will eat these goggles. <laughs> so thanks a lot guys for watching. Um, I hope some of this content was useful to some of you. Um, this is our first time predator proofing a coop. so. I'm just kind of going by the skin of my pants here, but I did Google this hardware cloth and it does seem to be the best for keeping predators out. And then I just went a step further and put it in the trench there. So the only thing I'm worried about is that fresh dirt there being there and uh, pretty easy for an animal to dig through. So if they end up digging underneath that, then they might be able to get in, but I highly doubt it. Um, you can probably, see how many staples I put into that thing. I bought a box of 5,000 staples and I probably used half of those. So um, she's pretty tight, I would think. Um, but uh, yeah, as you can see, this place is a garbage dump right now. That's the roof right there, so I'll keep that. But I gotta do some major cleanup around here. So anyways, thanks a lot guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And by the way, we reached 101 subscribers so that's a milestone for sure we even got a email from youtube con congratulating us so that means a lot to us that, that means that there's some people that are actually interested in our content so thanks again guys for supporting us and following us on our homestead journey and there there will be some other videos like i said before there's a lot more coming we just put some heritage turkeys in the incubator so that'll be coming and then a couple things to look forward to is I'll be building some stuff because as we all know it's springtime now so winter is coming so thanks again guys we'll catch you in the next video